I certainly didn't expect to be, to be uh, for any of these things to happen, honestly. Um, yeah. I, I just knew I, I knew I wanted to be involved in technology. Um, and uh, in fact, the only reason I started a company back in 95, an internet company, was because I couldn't get it. There were only a few internet companies, and I couldn't get a job at any of them. <laughs> so they, um, I tried to get a job at, at Netscape um, and uh, sent my resume in and tried hanging out in the lobby, but I was too shy to talk to anyone. And, uh, and then I was like, okay, well, I guess I'll have to start a company because I can't get a job anywhere. My advice if somebody is in, wants to start a company is they should bear in mind that the most likely outcome is, is that it's not going to work. And they should reconcile themselves to that pos strong possibility. Um, and they should only do it if they feel that they, they are really compelled to do it. You know, it's, um, the, the way starting a company works is like, usually in the beginning, it's the very beginning, it's kind of fun. Um, and then it's really hellish for, for a number of years. You talked about chewing glass. Yeah, there's, there's a, fr a friend of mine who's a successful entrepreneur um, and uh, started actually his career around the same time as I did. And he, he has a good, good, good phrase, his name's Bo Lee. Uh, um, he said, yeah, you know, starting a company is like eating glass and staring into the abyss. Um, and, and if you don't eat the glass, you're not gonna be successful. People do not, uh, do not think critically enough. I mean, there's, critical thinking is a skill in short supply where people you, people take too many things as, they assume too many things to be true without sufficient basis in, 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 in that belief. Um, so um, it's very important that people closely analyze what, what is supposed to be true and, and, and try to build up, try to say, let's, let's analyze things from first principles, not by, not, not by analogy or not by convention. Um, if you, if you assume things are true by convention, which is actually what most people do, um, then it's difficult to gain insight into what, how things can be bettered. Um, so, you know, in any argument or, or, or any sort of train of thinking, um, you want to make sure that your, the underlying premises are valid and applicable and, um, and uh, you know, and, and then in reaching a conclusion that the conclusion you're reaching is necessarily driven by the underlying premises and the interconnection between those premises. That may seem like a really simple thing to say, but most people don't do that. Um, I think so it's really the foundation of rational thought. If somebody is doing something that is useful to the rest of society, I think that's a good thing. Like, it doesn't have to change the world. Like, you know. Um, if you're doing something that has high value to, to people, um, and, and frankly, even if it's something, if it's like um, just a little game, um, or you know, the <laughs> some improvement in photo sharing or something, if it if it has, if it has a small amount of, of good uh, for a large number of people, um, that's, I mean, I think that's that's fine. Like, stuff doesn't need to be changed the world just to be good. People tend to overweight risk um, on a personal level. It's one thing if you've got, you know, a mortgage to pay and kids to support, and that if you were to deviate from your job, that well, how are you going to feed your family and pay the rent? And okay, that's understandable. But let's say you're young and you're just coming out of college or coming out of high school or whatever. The what? What do you? What do you risk? You know, you're not going to starve. I mean, right. it's it's really certainly not in any kind of modern economy. It's it's so easy to earn enough money just to live somewhere and eat food. Um, mm -hmm. You could, you know, that's, that's, that's any, I mean, yeah, uh, very easy to do. So mm -hmm. I don't know what, you know, what are they, what are they afraid of? They're, they're mostly afraid of uh, failure, I think, or, yeah. but yeah. people should be, be less risk averse when there's not much at risk. Got to make sure that that you that whatever you're doing is a great product or service. It, it has to be really great. And I go back to what I was saying earlier, where um, 
if you're a new company, I mean, unless it's like some new industry or, or new market that, if it's an untapped market, or then, then uh, you have more ability to, you, this, this, the standard is lower for your product or service. But if you're entering anything where there's an existing marketplace against large entrenched competitors, then your product or service needs to be much better than theirs. It can't be a little bit better because then you put yourself in the shoes of the consumer and they say, why would you buy it as a consumer? You're always going to buy the trusted brand unless there's a big difference. So a lot of times, uh, you know, an entrepreneur will come up with something which is only slightly better. Um, and it's, it's not, it can't just be slightly better. It's got to be a lot better. If, if you're creating a company or if you're joining a company, uh, the most important thing is to uh, attra is to attract great people. So either be with, join a group that's amazing that you really respect, or if, you, if you're building a company, you've got to gather great people. I mean, all a company is is a group of people that have gathered together to create a product or service. And so, depending upon how talented and hardworking that group is, and the degree to which they are focused uh, cohesively. In, in a good direction, that will determine the success of the company. So do everything you can to, to gather great people uh, if, if you're creating a company.